Have you ever tried to render out your fire in Eevee and it just does not look good at all? This is probably because you turned up the black body intensity in the principled volume shader. Doing this in Eevee will make the edges of the fire look very blurry, pixelated, and when you render this out, you can see it looks really bad. For the longest time, I would always render my simulations in Cycles and not Eevee because the fire just did not look that great. Well, I have found a solution. So today I'll be showing you how you can turn your render in Eevee from this over to something that looks good like this. And this is very comparable to Cycles. It might even look a little bit better. As for comparison in the render time, the EV render over 200 frames took about 9 minutes and the one in cycles took about 11 minutes. So the times are very similar and it looks just as good. I've created many tutorials on fire simulations so we're going to skip the process of creating the fire simulation. If you're new to that and you don't really know what you're doing, you can click in the top right corner to view a simulation that's very similar to this one. Real quick though, I'll just be going through these settings so you can create it yourself if you want to. The resolution divisions in the domain I've set to 256. I've turned adaptive domain on. And for the fire down here, I set the reaction speed, which is the height of the flames, to 0.5. Over here, I set the end frame to 200 and the type is modular. If we select our flow object, we can see the flow type is set to fire. The behavior is set to inflow. And then for the texture down here, I've just enabled a texture with, with an animated offset so it moves around the simulation. This texture is just a basic clouds texture with a low size and a high contrast value. With that out of the way, let's jump into the settings and actually create the good looking fire in Eevee. So the first thing that we need to do is set up the material. If we select our domain, we can go over to the material tab and then check out what this principled volume shader is doing. If we skip to frame 82 or so and press Z and go into rendered view, you're not gonna see anything. The reason for that is because there is no emission. If we turn the black body intensity up to five, you'll notice that we have some fire in our scene. Now, if we were to render this out by hitting F12, we can see the fire is fine, it looks okay. But if we go over to the EV settings, we can make it look a little bit better. Jumping over to the render tab, we can enable bloom so we get a nice glow around the fire. We can also enable screen space reflections and then open up the volumetrics tab. The tile size down here, the lower you go with this value, the better the fire will look. You'll notice though, if I set this down to two pixels, you can see that the fire looks a little bit sharper, but the edges of the fire do not look good at all. You'll notice it has like this layering effect. It's very sharp right here and it doesn't blend well at all. How we can fix this is by changing the material and changing a couple settings over here. One main thing that we can change is the start and the end meters right here in the volumetrics panel. Basically, this is how close or far EV will render fire and smoke. If it's closer than 0.1 meters to the camera, you're not going to be able to see the fire. How EV renders fire is basically it breaks, it breaks up the smoke into different layers and then puts those layers on top of each other. The amount of layers is based off of the sample count. The distribution setting underneath here is how many samples are going to be closer to the camera. I'm telling you this because we don't need the end frame to be at 100 meters. Basically what's happening is it's going to stretch out those samples over 100 meters. If we take a look at our scene, you'll notice that our camera is positioned right here and it's about 9 meters away from the camera. So we don't need to set this to 100, we can set this a lot lower, like a value of 12. Now the samples are going to be a lot closer together and it's going to give us more detail in the fire. Now if we press Z and go into rendered view, you're going to not really see anything. And that is because we need to set the distribution. Since this is the more samples closer to the camera, we need to set this all the way up to one. Now we're going to get a lot more detail in our fire and it's going to look a lot better. We're also going to enable volumetric shadows and this will give us some shadows in the smoke and the fire. I'm also going to come over here to the sampling and set the render amount higher. This will also determine how good the fire will look in the rendered view, as you can see on screen. I'm gonna be setting the render amount to 128 samples and the viewport, let's go with a value of 64. Already you can see that the fire is looking a lot better, but there is one more thing that we're gonna do and that is change the material. Let's come up here to the top right corner and click and drag to bring out a new window and then we'll switch this down to the shader editor. Then we can select our domain so we can change the material. This black body intensity is not what we want. Let's set that down to zero. We're not gonna need that for this scene. 
Instead, what we're gonna do is press Shift A, go underneath Input, and then add in an attribute node. We're gonna take the flame attribute and plug that into an emission shader, which we can then add to this principled volume shader. So I'm gonna press Shift A and go underneath shader and then add in an emission shader. We'll then press Shift A and add in a add shader and place it here. We'll take the emission from this node and plug it into the add shader. Then for the attribute over here, you're gonna to want to type in the word flame. Take the color from the attribute and then you're gonna to want to plug that into the color of the emission. And there we go, we can see it already working. Then to control the color, we're gonna press Shift A and add in a color ramp and place it in between the attribute and the emission. Here is where we're going to set up the color. What you want is for this black value to remain the same. You don't wanna change this. If for some reason you wanted to, and if we drag that up, you're gonna see it's gonna fill out the entire domain. So make sure that this value stays black. If we were to drag the black value closer, it's going to clamp down on the values of the flame and make it a bit shorter. Doing this will make the edges a lot more smooth. We can also switch this over to ease and that will even make it look a lot better. Now what we can do is hit that plus sign to add in a new handle. For this handle, it's gonna be a red color, somewhere around here. And this is for the top of the flame, as you can see. And then for this white handle, we're going to select it. And this is going to be a bright yellow color, somewhere around here. Then for the emission strength, we're going to set this up to a value of about 5. Maybe let's go with a little bit taller. Let's go with 10. And there you can see our fire is looking a lot better. Then what you can do is just play around with these colors. We can bring this a little bit less saturated so it's a bit more white. Or you can make it more saturated. It's totally up to you. Once you're happy with your result, you can go ahead and save your project and then render this out. For comparison, here is the render with the black body intensity. You'll notice that the edges are very sharp and it just does not look good. Then if we go over to slot one, here is the render with the color ramp and the emission. And as you can see, the edges are a lot more smooth. There's no harsh edges and it looks so much better. And just for fun, here is a render with cycles and then here is a render with Eevee. This render took about two seconds and the one with cycles also took about two seconds. So again, the render times are very similar, but you'll notice that the quality of the fire is almost identical. The, the EV one actually might look slightly more smooth. And then what you can do is just render this out into an animation and you can get some really high quality fire using the EV render engine. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial. If you learned something new or created your own simulation, please send it to me on Instagram or tag me on any other social media at BlenderMadeEasy. If you're new to this channel, consider subscribing because only about 20% of the people who watch my videos are subscribed. That's gonna do it. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next one.